So today I'm releasing this video game, Adventure Builder. And uh, I haven't spoken a lot about it yet, so let me fill in a few answers to questions. Like why? Why, am I, why did I make a video game? Well, when I was a kid, I didn't have a ton of good role models growing up. Um, one thing I remember hearing a lot was, you know, it's only a lie if you get caught, which is not the best thing to hear when you're a kid. And then TV and radio and all this media was pushing greed and selfishness. That's how you get ahead in the world. But then I'd play these adventure video games and I'd go on these, these huge adventures and <clears throat> I'd learn hand-eye coordination and resource management. And then I'd get to the end of the video game and it would have this message that says, wow, you're a great hero, way to go saving the world or, or something like that. And the best lesson I got from these video games was to care. Because I get that message at the, at the end of the video game and it really made me feel like I was on some kind of special quest to do good in the world. And then I go out into the real world and if I saw an opportunity to do something good, to help someone, to, to take a lie and turn it into a truth, <clears throat> I would think, yeah, I'm going to be like that video game character, that video game hero. I'm going to do it and I would do, do the good things. And often I would get ridicule from other people saying, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you wasting your time doing these good deeds for? You know, that, that's not good. That's not how you get ahead in life. You got you to gotta be greedy and take and all this stuff. And it was the video games that gave me the courage to care, basically. They gave me the courage to do what I thought was right, not what everyone else was telling me. So fast forward 20 years, there's this eight-year-old kid showing me his newest video game and I'm like wow cool let me see what the kids are playing these days and he's like wow look I can light this guy on fire and I was like oh why are you lighting him on fire oh because it's funny and I'm like wait is he like an evil robot or is he an alien come to destroy the earth or something you're like no it's just some guy walking down the street I can light him on fire it's, it's hilarious and I'm like no no so when I had kids, I decided I need to make a video game so my kids can have that experience that I had when I was a kid and get that good influence. Hopefully they'll also just get it from me in real life. However, <clears throat> so I made this game Adventure Builder and it has Adventure Builder values, which are just basic morality. There's nothing to believe in or anything like that. Just things like courage and honesty, stuff like that. And uh, originally I made the game super complicated and I felt like something was wrong and so I went back and played some of those old Nintendo games and I was playing Metroid and I got to the end of Metroid and I finished it and then I looked at the game file 128 kilobytes is the entire game not megabytes 128 kilobytes like an eighth of a megabyte and I realized I'm making my game way too complicated so I started again and I simplified everything, streamlined all the stuff, took out all the stuff that wasn't important, emphasized all the stuff that was important, took out all the tedium, basically. And then with the graphics, I took out the photorealistic graphics because it made it, it made it so if you saw a rock on the ground, you weren't sure if that was part of the background or if that was something you could pick up and use. So I simplified the graphics and I realized if I if I take advantage of the, the way a video game works, as opposed to make, trying to make them, them realistic, I can color code things to divide them into categories. So it's easy to tell what you're dealing with in the game. I can make the background simple so that when you're building something and you have a bunch of parts laid out, you can see your parts easily and you can, you can organize them and stuff. So a lot of things like that. And when I streamlined the game, it freed up a lot of computer resources, you know, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of free memory and processing power now. And I thought, what can I do with that? Well, this is where I did something that I might even say is unique because I've never seen it done before. I feel like someone must have done this at some point. But basically, this is a top-down, real-time <laughs> RPG video game. So it's, it's, it's a giant robot. Thing, it's a game. And I thought, what if I manually program in layers to be like 3D. Oh, there's an airplane interrupting me. <clears throat> so what if, what if I could manually program layers so that you could jump on top of an object 
and then go under an object. And you can see the object when you're on top of it, but when you're under the object, you can see through the object to yourself. At first I thought it was going to be complicated, but uh, 20 minutes of coding and, and it was working. And it works really well, and um, so I put it in the game. So now there's this 3D world that makes it a lot more interesting than it was, was when it was a 2D game. And uh, I don't want to say too much about the game. Basically you start in this peaceful, serene setting, and then you go on this epic adventure, and at the end, everything is different, and also everything is the same. So I don't want to ruin any of it, so please, if you uh, are interested in adventure games and you want to get involved in an adventure for yourself that will maybe have a good influence on you, or if you're a parent and you're worried about your kids playing all these terrible games, you want to, you want to give them a game they can play that will hopefully have a good influence on them, play this game. And if you want to just go check it out uh, for no reason other than to get it more views so it gets higher in the ratings, I'm not going to complain about that. Oh, and the, the last thing. I'm putting it out there for free, just for donations. I know this is a little bit uh, idealistic, maybe even naive of me. However, that is my preferred way of things working in the world. And... <clears throat> I've been living on donations for a while, and as long as you guys keep making that possible, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing things that way. Okay.